Welcome to the audio ministry of Nanda Flora Williams. She is a speaker, author, psalmist, and coach. As you listen, be inspired, motivated, and challenged. And as you continue, you continue to persist in prayer. You know, you die to your flesh, you die to your soul, you die to your own desires, your own longings, your own wants. Okay, so John chapter 12, in John chapter 12 from verse 24 to 28, Jesus talks about seed, you know, and he says, if we will be his disciples, if we will come after him, we must deny ourselves, we must take up our cross and we must follow him. But he says, there he says in John chapter 12, he, he talks about, you know, us losing our lives. I'll go to it. John chapter 12, verse 24. John chapter 12, verse 24. So he's talking about himself. He's talking about how, you know, him laying down his life for us. And I was saying that when we come to pray, when we go into a place of prayer, you have to be ready to die to yourself. So we're talking about, so I've talked a little bit about prayer, talked about, you know, um, starting off to pray talking i've talked about how you progress in prayer and the things that i've learned as i've been praying and we just finished talking about distraction we're talking about discipline and distraction and how you deal with that in the place of prayer so how i discipline myself how i deal with my flesh flesh doesn't like to pray mm -mm, does not like it so you have to put it under so John chapter 12, verse 24, I assure you, most solemnly tell you, this is Jesus talking, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just one grain. It never becomes more, but lives by itself alone. But if it dies, it produces many others and yields a rich harvest. Okay. Anyone who loves his life, this is where I'm going, loses it. When you stay in a place of intercession, when you go to prayer, when you're doing any spiritual activity, you experience a death of your own self-life. So anyone who loves his life loses it. If I go to prayer and I love my life, I find that I don't produce as much fruit. But if I go to a place of prayer and I'm ready to just lay down my life, make myself uncomfortable because I want to pray for a nation, I want to pray for a group of people, I want to pray for a family, I want to pray for my community or even just for my children. And I adopt an attitude and a, a stance of I will do whatever it takes. I will, I will make my flesh uncomfortable. I need to get up, get out of, get out of bed. I need to pace if I'm sleepy. I need to fast if it's needed. I need to, you know, maybe adopt a kneeling position because I want to humble myself because I want to, you know, just keep away distraction. All of that is all uncomfortable. That is you losing a part of yourself. So see, anyone who loves his life loses it. But anyone who hates his life. So there's a, there's a kind of, in prayer, there's a kind of self-hatred, sort of, so to speak. Excuse the language, but you know what, I'm, what I'm trying to say in essence, not that you should hate yourself. It's just that you have all, all the, the parts of you that are saying, oh, hold the blanket. Oh, lie down, just take it easy. Oh, don't stretch. Don't pray long or just pray a little or just skirmish over the prayer points. Whereas maybe within your spirit, there's a burden, there's a, there's a, there's a travail and you just want to do the barest minimum. Okay. Jesus says, anyone who loves his life, John chapter 12, verse 25, anyone who loves his life loses it. But anyone who hates his life in this world will keep it to eternal life. Whoever has no love for, no concern for, no regard for his life here on earth, but despises it, preserves his life forever and ever. 
So you're in this place of prayer. You have no concern for your flesh. You don't want to have any regard for your flesh. You despise it. Okay. When you do that in a place of prayer, you reap a, f a harvest, a fruit of, you know, just spiritual impact. There's a lot of spiritual impact. You, you reap a harvest of righteousness. You reap a growth in your spirit. Why? Because you're making this part of you, which is your flesh, smaller. So your spirit gains ascendancy. And as a result, you know that you are able to manifest more of God's life. That's the way life of God which you carry. You're able to walk in greater authority. Because when you behold God's face, when you stand before God, you'll be like Elijah. The Bible just says Elijah was a Tishbite from Tishbe. And then Elijah's talking to Ahab. And he says, he talks about God. And then he says this, such effrontery and audacity. He said, he talks about his God and says, the God before whom I stand. That's why he, he could he could speak to, you know, the rain, tell it not to rain and go and pray again and tell it to rain. That's why he could speak to um, the prophets of Baal. Why? Because he was standing before God. He was a man of prayer. He was standing before God. You know, so when you pray this, when you when you pray, when you when you discipline yourself, when you have no regard for your flesh life. That part of you gets smaller, smaller, and your spirit gains ascendancy. For us to be the people who know their God, who will be strong and do exploits, we have to be men and women of the spirit. And for us to be men and women of the spirit, we have to be people who behold the face of God, who have no regard for our flesh, who want to live in a place. So Jesus says to or God says to us, in Galatians 5, verse 16, he says, But I say, walk, live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. We all know we gravitate in and out of it. But if you want to grow, if you want to know more of God, you need to begin to press into the place where your flesh gains ascendancy, you leave the life of the spirit and you deprive your flesh of power. As you continue to do that, when you do that in prayer, your spirit grows go stronger. Okay, so we're going to go back to Matthew again. We're going to go back to Matthew 26. Matthew 26. Okay, and we're at verse 39. And going a little further, he threw himself upon the ground. I said, you have to make yourself uncomfortable. Okay. He threw his, himself upon the ground, on his face. I said, when, we, when Jesus was on his face, and he prayed. He prayed. And this is what he says, my father. Prayer is about relationship. You know, when, when I first, first became a Christian, I think, oh, prayer, oh, God, so we're going to pray for one hour, oh, God. <laughs> but that's because I didn't understand. Jesus says here, he says, my father, my father. In the book, book of Ephesians, Paul talks about God and he talks about prayer. And he talks about, he bows his, he says, he bows his knee to his father bows his knee to his father so when we come to pray is about relationship your father wants to see you your your father wants to be with you in genesis chapter 3 after adam and eve had eaten the fruit that god had told them of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil god had told them not to do it the Bible says that they heard the sound of God walking in the garden. Okay, he had, he had Eden, it was beautiful. He had what they needed. They named all the 
animals. They had all the rivers. They had all the, you know, precious stones. It was beautiful. What was God doing walking in the garden? If you have a, re if, okay, let me put this way. For me, when I had a religious mindset, I thought prayer was something that I had to do. The more you fall in love with God, the more you want to spend time with God. So think about anyone that you love or anything you love, you truly love. You always want to be in their company. You can't, you cannot have enough of them. So you may not, you may not be there now, but as you continue to press into God, you will grow in your love for him. Our hearts are funny. Yours may not be like this, but maybe I have true confession. My heart is funny. It can, it can straight to this, 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 that, and the other, if I'm not careful. And I find that if I'm going to walk in obedience and I'm going to walk in, in if I'm going to grow in loving God, I have to keep coming. I have to keep coming in worship. I have to keep coming in fellowship. I have to keep coming. As I, as I keep coming, as I keep spending time with God, I love God. And it's out of that love that I choose not to sin. I choose to do the right thing. I choose to be obedient. It's out of that love. Because I love God, I don't want to offend him. But when I've gotten filled with the cares of this world and I have so many things to do and I'm gallivanting here, there and the other, I tend to lose that tenderness. That, you know, that romantic, that passionate longing to just please God. And then I find myself doing one little thing here, one little thing there. I shouldn't be doing, you know, lying down my bed when I should be getting up to pray. And I tell myself, no, 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 no. No. Come back to God. You know, really spend time with your father. So he says, my father, if it is possible... Let this cup pass away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, not what I desire, but as you will and desire. So he comes to God and now he begins to unburden himself. When you first, when you first start praying, especially if you pray in the spirit or even if you pray in English. When I... First started praying, I found out that when I'd first start, lots of things would pass through my mind. Lots of things. And there were times that it was initially when I first started, I had so much passing through my mind that I would be discouraged and I'll stop praying. Then I started to ask God, how do I deal with this? And then God said to show me that those were burdens in my soul. They were burdens that I was carrying. You know, there are things that I was thinking about, pondering on, questions I had, challenges I'd gone through, difficulties, things I didn't have. So God said to me, instead of coming and trying to just go into intercession or why don't you pray off those things? Just pray through each of them. So I'd come to prayer. And just like here where it says, Jesus now talks to his father about the challenge, you know, he's going to go to the cross and he's saying, God, if it's possible, let this cup pass away from me. But, but if it's not, then have your way. Let your will be done. So I would start praying. And I'll pray maybe if it's something that had to do with um, my house or had to do with, or I needed finances. I'll just pray in the spirit. It's important to pray in tongues. I can't, I cannot, uh, I can't overestimate or underestimate. I'm not sure what the right English is, but you understand what I'm trying to say. The importance of praying in the spirit. You need to pray in tongues. It's important. It has so many benefits, but that will be a discussion for another time. So I'll pray. Or if you don't pray in tongues, does not mean you still can't talk to God about your problems. Just speak in English. Just talk to him. Just tell him what it is. Talk about all those things going through your mind. So I'd pray until I'll pray until I'd come to a place of quietness. I've not really started interceding like praying for a nation or a community or people or for a person. I've not started. Not 
not necessarily, but I'm unburdening my heart. So that's what Jesus does here. He unburdens his heart before God. Unburdens his heart before God. Thank you for listening to this message. We trust that you've been blessed, encouraged, and transformed to go out and make a difference.